All right, guys, we're back on the floor here at E3. It's the Infinite Crisis booth we're here from Turbine. And of course, now we're going to be talking to one of the developers about the game. We've already had some players. We already had some people come up and play the game. Now we're going to hear more about the game from a developer standpoint. So why don't you first start by introducing yourself? Hi, my name is Cardinal Kerr, and I'm the creative director for Infinite Crisis. All right, so what was the thought process going into the Gotham Heights map for this game? Because it's something that not every single MOBA genre actually has. Well, ultimately, we wanted to start off with a map that really uh, made people aware of what it was like to play those characters. So, I mean, one of the things that Gotham Heights does really, really well is it allows you to jump right into the very beginning, feel very effective, and if you're Green Lantern, just start dumpstering people right up front. Oh, man, we've seen a lot of Green Lantern dumpstering people in this one. What other uh, kind of unique elements to the MOBA genre does Infinite Crisis offer to the players? Well, really, we kind of focus on two separate things. One of them is our destructive PvP, which basically allows you, through any of your actions, to start smashing through other areas of the environment. And we really wanted to sell the fact that you're a superhero and make you really feel like, like you really could be a person who's just basically leveling earth-shattering blows on pretty much anything around you. And that allows you to open up pathways and smash through areas that you couldn't get to before. But the next one is obviously the catastrophic event system, which is all about meteors and basically lowering a lot of hurt on people. Yeah, well, definitely the catastrophic events offer a, di a difficulty degree that kind of a lot of the MOBA genres haven't really had. Are there any other sort of things, or what was the thought process you had adding these big drastic changes into the map? Well, we wanted to make sure that you know it really felt dynamic. Like the whole point of this was to have a lot of things you could really react to and capitalize on right up front, so that you and your team and your team cohesion was a thing that actually won you map, and as opposed to your individual performances. So that was really it. All right, well, team cohesion as well as just helping each other out is a big point here. As we talked about before while we were casting, not only are you going to be able to pick up credits by killing those drones, but they also have to drop them on the ground. That was a very unique element that I don't think I've really seen out of most MOBA games. What was kind of the idea for that? Well, we really want to make sure that it's very, very clear what's happening. I mean, one of the things which I feel that new players can struggle with in this genre that maybe actually closes some of it off is that they aren't really aware of the fact that sometimes they're actually making real big mistakes by not death blowing everything around them. Whereas in this one, we wanted to make sure that you could actually play the game in that way and there was actually a benefit for you doing so. But at the same time, you would allow other people to react to that. So we really have a hybrid solution which allows people who actually deal death blows to actually get the currency straight to them. Whereas if you're not there for them, the currency drops, and that's visible for other folks, so they can actually ambush you. So like, we actually see this happen a lot in developer play days, where you'll see a giant stack of credits, and you'll be running out there, and meanwhile, Nightmare Batman's hanging out in the stealth pad, like duct tape stretched out, and he shows up and buries you. Um, and well, some indirect little taunts and traps being set up there with the credits kind of floating in the ground. Oh, what did you just say? If we're going to pick those up, it'll be boom. And then you want to get in a plane dropped on your head, which is one of the cooler things that we've had so far. And, all right, I got to ask you, how much fun was it to program some of these abilities? <laughs> uh, it was kind of awesome. Like you, often when we have our designer powwows where everyone's sitting around brainstorming, we sit down and we're like, oh, could we do that? Hell yeah, we could do that. It'll be awesome. <laughs> All right, well, it's very awesome to see some of your favorite superheroes going head-to-head -head against each other, dropping planes, throwing cars at each other. Now, we've seen a couple of the cast of characters so far today at Infinite Crisis Day 1. How many characters are we going to actually get the chance to see when the game comes out? Well, uh, I can't give you an exact number. I'm going to tell you that my goal is north of 20, and I want to make sure that ultimately there's enough for some real good picks and counter picks and bans and just a lot of back and forth that allows for a decent amount of gameplay variety. All right, and of course, we did hear from the background of the story. It comes from the Infinite Crisis universe, where everything's been thrown into chaos. There's a giant multiverse that's been created, and we featured a couple planets so far. Like, we've had the Atomic Planet. We, of course, had the Gaslight Planet, which a lot of the favorite characters are coming from. I mean, are we going to see more of these worlds being integrated in the maps or just in the character choices as well? Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot more in terms of actually the manifestation within the maps themselves. I mean, Gaslight is a really big favorite, so I expect that we're going to see some more Gaslight aspects in the near future. But beyond that one, we really want to try to make sure we can double down on the maps and the, I'm sorry, the worlds that we have right now. So you can expect more mecha variants, you can expect more nightmare variants, so you can expect, you know, you can expect a lot of fleshing out of just those cycles so that you can see more of the characters you know and love in, in their dark reflections. All right, well, there's going to be a whole cast of characters coming out when the game does wind up releasing. I know everybody's going to be super excited for that. Personally, I'm excited to see what else you want to do with characters like The Flash and Poison Ivy. But we've got all this awesome stuff in one game. When it comes out, how much is this going to be? It sounds like a game that like, I would pay dollars for. What? This is a free-to-play game. I... It's free-to-play, guys, so that means you're definitely going to want to check out Infinite Crisis when it winds up coming out finally. And it's, in, it's in beta right now. Is there any way that they can maybe tune in to like a Facebook page kind of thing to get some beta keys? 
Hey, my suggestion is uh, you should pay very close attention to infinitecrisis.com and really just kind of make sure that you're willing and capable of selling our game to other people and making sure our marketing guys know so they can hook you up with some beta keys. You know, you know how it is. One, one back scratching, the other one, you know, we're good. All right, guys. Well, that's what we got from the developer side of the Infinite Crisis. And that's going to actually wrap up our first day of E3 coverage. Don't forget, we still got two more action packed days. We have seven games between Complexity Gaming and Curse Academy. Complexity is up 2 0 right now, but things could change. Or maybe it's going to go in Prowley's eyes the way of a 7 0. We'll have to see about that one, guys. But on behalf of everybody here at the Infinite Crisis booth, the staff, the players, my co caster Elements, and myself, Optimus Tom, we'll see you guys as E3 continues tomorrow.